Okay, this video is the first of a couple of videos that we're going to create for in completing lab two, configuring a failover clustering. This is found in configuring advanced Windows Server 2012 services R2, part of the Microsoft official academic course in preparation for exam 70-412. This exercise, exercise 2.1, will be configuring the ISCSI client. <clears throat> so I'm going to scroll down. Before we begin, the lab environment consists of both the, of the student workstations that are connected to a local area network, along with a server that functions as a domain controller for a domain called Contoso.com. So we already have the server one set up. We have, I'm sorry, this is our RWDC has been set up. Our server one has been set up. Our server two, we were working both of, the, both of these during the last lab. We also have storage one, which was created during the setup. Okay, and we're going to start with exercise 2.1. The overview for this is that for a failover cluster to function, you need to have a shared drive. Storage 01 is an ISCII target, which has an ISCII drive that can be used by server 1 and server 2. In this exercise, you will connect to the ISCII drivers using the built-in ISCII client software that comes with Windows Server 2012 R2. We're going to look specifically at why failover cluster nodes need to connect to the SAN. The approximate completion time for this is 25 minutes. Now, as a rule of housekeeping, this is my Hyper-V. I'm actually going to shut everything off briefly. Turn off. Turn off. Turn off. Turn off. Turn off. Now, I did not work with storage one during lab one, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. But just to be on the safe side, I want to go ahead and right click and create a checkpoint. And I want to create a checkpoint here for the RWDC. Right click, checkpoint for server one. Right click to create a checkpoint for server two. The reason for this is if we misstep somewhere in these, in these um, instructions, we don't want to have to go all the way back to the beginning to redo what we've just done. So by creating that checkpoint, we can go back to that checkpoint and basically restart from that checkpoint. So now we don't have to go back completely uh, restart lab one. So checkpoints are very, very helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and start the RWDC. And server one. And I'm going to minimize this for now. Move this over. As soon as this comes up to boot in, I will go ahead and resume this video. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and log in as Contoso slash administrator on the RWDC01. Again, we are using this password throughout. And I'm going to go over to server01, again, other user.
and I'm going to pause the video until the server manager comes up. Okay, I've minimized the domain controller. Now I'm going to, here I am on server one. Click on tools. And the ASCII initiator. And then click on yes. In the target box, we're going to type in storage01.contoso.com. Now, I haven't started storage one yet, so I'm going to need to. And I'm going to go ahead and start up server 2. And again, we're going to log in as other user. And it's going to go into the Ethernet connection and just make sure that the IP address has still been assigned. Okay, and everything looks okay there. Close, 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 and minimize. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to go back. I'm back on server one. I'm going to go and click on Quick Connect. And it looks like it does see it, so that's a good thing. Brings us to question one. What is the IQN of the target? The IQN is what you see right here. To close the Quick Connect dialog box, we're going to go ahead and click on Done. And we're going to go ahead and click on OK. Close the ISCII Initiator Properties dialog box. And going to the Server Manager, we're going to again click on Tools. And this time going to computer management. And I just minimized the server manager, I didn't close it. And we're going to wait for the computer management console to open. In the meantime, I want to make sure my server 2 and get logged in. Minimize. There we go. Oops. 
So here's our computer management. I'm just going to expand this. You can do it just by holding down your left mouse click and dragging. Kind of like Excel, expanding the column with an Excel. Okay. Under the storage node, we want to click on disk management. So here's disk management. That brings us to question two. How many unknown disks do you see? Expand this a little bit. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five unknown disks. So we're going to right click on the disk one and select online. Left click, right click, and then initialize disk. And now we're going to go ahead and click on OK. And then we're going to right click and choose new simple. Why is it not coming up? There we go. Right click, new simple volume. Next. Next. And let it drop to E, that's fine. Next. On the volume label, we're going to change this to shared disk. And then click on next and finish. We get a pop-up box, and we did. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on cancel. Now we're going to do basically the same thing with disk two. All right, so left click, right click, online, right click, initialize, OK. Left click, right click, new simple volume. Next, next, we're going to let it default to F. And we're going to call this Q U O R U M D I S K. And then next, and then finish. Okay, and then we're just going to close out of this and cancel. Now I'm going to minimize server 1 and go into server 2. And click on tools. Same thing as Geek Initiator. Yes. I'll minimize this for now. Okay. And here we're going to type in sword01.pintoso.com. Quick connect. And then done. We're going to click on Volumes and Devices and click on Auto Configure button. And then click on OK to close the Initiator Properties dialog box. And this is the end of exercise 2.1.
Our next video will be exercise 2.2, installing failover clustering.